My mom died from breast cancer. It was a shock when my dad died. It was just really hard for me because I didn't believe it. was a mixed it. drug intoxication. He was just an amazing husband. He was, you know, he was like, he was if you look at our family picture, he's the center, and that's Kids how it was. Everyone cry. just loved. I mean, I loves you this the is my worst heart. She said, but my little heart is breaking. Clay was just an amazing husband. He was. He was fun, he was he was loving, he was adoring. In our family, he was just the center of our family. If you look at our family picture, he's the center, and that's how it was. Everyone just loves Clay, they love him. I didn't like that he was a pilot. I worried about him all the time. I worried about him constantly. He was on his last flight for the National Guard, and he crashed. It was, I mean, it was just my worst fear come true because I had thought about it so much. I, I had told him, please don't, don't ever let them show up at my door and tell me. And it happened like, that way. And so I, I was shocked. My first thought was for my kids. And I thought, I'll be strong. I can, I can do this. But what about my kids? And how can my kids do that? How can they? go without their dad because he was just such an amazing dad well he was flying um his helicopter and there was something wrong with the engine and it accidentally um crashed and when the ambulance he was only alive until the ambulance got there and then they just couldn't fix him vivian olson who's my sister-in-law uh, came to me and said that she wanted to start a grief support center in, in Utah County, where they were living at the time, um, similar to one that she had experienced back in Lansing, Mich Michigan, when um, in connection with the death of her son. And of course, I couldn't turn her down because I had been uh, acquainted in my um, personal life and in, in my counseling position with people who had experienced death, and I knew how devastating it could be. We put our heads together and figured out how to get this organization up and running. And then in May, I believe it was in May 2003, we opened to five families, that's all. And uh, that first year we had only 50 people the whole year come to our organization and receive the services. The families that walk in the door are pleased to find out that they're not alone, that there are other families here to, that they are able to talk with about the things that have happened in their lives. Our philosophy at Canary Garden is a philosophy of hope, a philosophy of caring, a philosophy of love, and having a safe place for the children that come that they know that they're not alone. About 6.35, 6.40, the families arrive. Um, we divide them up into age-appropriate groups. The children are divided up by how old they are, and the adults are divided up by how the death occurred, either long-term, something like cancer, sudden, uh, something like a suicide or a car accident, or if they um, had a child die in their family. The littles groups, are ages three to five. They do a lot of learning how to put their emotions to words because a lot of times they don't have words to express themselves at that age. It's important for children to come to our support center to first of all have a safe, secure environment in which they can grieve and be with others. It's a hurting heart club in a sense. It's not a club by any means, but it's a support center where there are others that have hurting hearts. I work with the middle group age uh, six and seven. We do a variety of different activities. We color, we play games, we read stories to each other and just try to gain interaction from the children on uh, insights that may help them work through their grief. The preteen group is ages 10 to 12 and they love a lot of physical activity as well. They focus on journaling, uh, do some board games and tell stories about the people that died also. The teen group is ages 13 to 18. Uh, they don't have a lot of planned activities. They start with a talking circle. They enjoy being together and just want to talk for most of their meeting. We underestimated the power of the adult groups. There is a strong need 
um, for the adult groups because um, sometimes it's the only time that these adults have to be without their children throughout the week. Canary Garden has given a little person who can't possibly have the skills to cope with this on their own, the wherewithal to, uh, to start healing and, and make good choices in her grieving process. I have seen some changes. I mean, I've been a lot nicer to people. I mean, after mom died, I was so mean to my sister and kind of touchy and didn't really want to be around people. And now I'm back to myself, so. Well, you can come here and you can share your feelings and you can just have them like shared and no one will else say anything and that you can let your emotion, all emotions out. The people here know what I'm going through and they've had experiences like it and everything here is confidential. They helped me um, be a little more happier and they helped me um, um, learn a lot about my dad and um, stuff like that.